I hear a lot from you guys that one of the biggest fears you have is making a mistake on someone's books. So this video is all about what to do if you've made a mistake as a bookkeeper. We'll talk about the steps to take to fix a mistake and how to communicate with your client about it. The first thing I want to say is remove the perfectionist mindset. I have made tons of mistakes as a bookkeeper. That is a big part of how you learn. The thing I want you to remember is that in 99% of cases, you can fix whatever went wrong in QuickBooks. So in my mind, the biggest problem with making a mistake is that you're wasting your own time, right? So if you can kind of flip that in your mind and be like, instead of I'm just wasting my time fixing this mistake, it's that you are learning. You're learning a new skill. You're learning something you didn't know before. You're learning from your mistakes. One piece of advice I do have is that I do not personally charge my clients if I mess something up and then it's gonna take me a couple hours to fix it. I eat the cost of that for my business. And there might be a little bit of gray area. Maybe something wasn't your fault and you are fixing it and in that case, I probably would charge the client. Or when I was first starting out, I actually charged a pretty low rate. I think I charged $25 an hour. And part of that was because, you know, I'd make little mistakes. I wasn't as fast at doing the process as I am now, 10 years later. And so in that case, I would just continually charge the client at that lower rate. Maybe I would like stop my clock if there was something out of the ordinary that I was spending extra time on as like a learning experience for myself. Let me know in the comments if you agree with that kind of gray area, if you charge clients when you're correcting a mistake or how you deal with that. In my opinion, at this point in my bookkeeping business, my clients are paying for my time and expertise and they're not really paying for me to like learn a new skill that I'm learning by correcting a mistake. All right, and if you're wondering what types of errors you possibly could make as a bookkeeper, I actually have two other videos on that. So I will link those for you in the description box. Maybe it's that you categorized a whole vendor wrong, which shouldn't be that hard because you can just reclassify that whole vendor. I've seen a lot of problems with undeposited funds. If your client is using that undeposited funds feature, I haven't used that in a few years, but that can get a little tricky if you have someone that doesn't know how to use it, along with applying payments to invoices. So if you're invoicing your clients, clients to get paid, you know, you have to kind of make sure you're matching those payments up correctly with the invoice that was charged to the client. An error in payroll could be higher stakes because that could actually affect someone's paycheck. So in that case, you really need to be very transparent, communicate really well with the employee who had a possible mistake and figure out the steps that you're going to take to reconcile that. But again, that happens. Like you've heard of people who either got overpaid or underpaid or didn't get the right benefits. As long as there is a reasonable expectation of setting things right, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna get through it. So first let's talk a little bit about how to interact with the client if you make a mistake. And then I'll get more into the step-by-step -step of how to actually fix the problem. So first of all, don't make excuses. Make sure you really own the problem as much as possible. And you can give like a brief explanation of what happened and where things kind of went wrong and why, but I wouldn't dwell on that too much. And I think if you do this in a clear, mature way, you can actually gain credibility with the client. I mean, they're human, they know people make mistakes. And so part of addressing your mistakes could actually help your relationship. And I have had instances where working through issues together kind of brings people closer together, helps them see like deeper into your thought process. And so if you can frame it like that within your mind, that could be really helpful. And then offer the client two different solutions. So two different path options. If there is some, there might be more, maybe there's only one option, but in general, give them a couple options. And in my experience, it helps to know kind of what your client's goals are. Are they just wanting to get the books done as quick as possible so they can file their taxes? Or are they wanting more detail in the reporting so they can really analyze like where their sources of income come from because usually those two different solutions one will probably be quicker with less detail in QuickBooks and then the other one might be like the more perfectly correct robust way to do it so maybe the easy way would be to create a journal entry to fix the problem and it will be correct for their taxes but it won't show as much detail so it's good to read the room figure out what your clients going for what they want and then how you can deliver that for them okay and then kind of step by step how have I fixed problems in the past or what is the process that I would go to so number one of course identify what's going on there's gonna be a point maybe in QuickBooks you pull a report it doesn't total what you expected or you go to reconcile and you're not able to reconcile so identify what's happening and then dig into why it's happening and I know obviously it's easy for me just to say figure out why it's happening that's gonna probably be the hardest part of this whole thing right so you can enlist other people to help you you can use bookkeeper forums if you're in a program like bookkeeper launch you can use their helpline you can ask a question on a bookkeeper Facebook group maybe you have like a little local mentoring group that you can ask questions to that is really great if you can kind of build your network 
work that way. You could also do a consultation with someone who is an expert kind of in what you're doing. So I have hired nerd enterprises before they have like a consultation thing that you can pay for. I also have another person that does that. I'm forgetting her name right now, but I'll leave her linked in the description box. And I think we actually partner with her a little bit. So I might have like a coupon code or something, but anyways, I will find that information and put it in the description box. And you may find that sometimes different bookkeepers don't agree on the best solutions. This has happened to me multiple times. So what I do in that case is I gather all my information. I understand each of the perspectives. And then in that case, I just need to take the initiative to pick a path, stick on it, and decide that's the solution I'm going to take. Because bookkeeping can be similar to other industries. Sometimes there's a black and white thing to do, or other times, like maybe you go to the doctor and they give you one solution, and then you go to another doctor, they give you another solution. Neither one is necessarily right or wrong. It's just that depending on that person's personality and experience and their goals and their life outlook and their personality, they might prescribe different solutions to the same problem. All right, then number four, once you decide set a plan in place, maybe give yourself a timeline and start implementing your plan. And I would say at this point in between like these step three and step four, this is a good time to talk in depth with your client and see if they have preferences. So sometimes you might not even need to tell the client that there's a mistake. If you're just going to fix it on your own time, it doesn't affect them. It's just like a learning thing for you. They'll never really know. I don't think that that's wrong to just like fix it yourself. Like that's fine. But if there is going to be like a time delay or something different in QuickBooks that they weren't expecting, then definitely talk to them. And that's the point you can kind of maybe lay out the solution options if you want their input. Then number five, as you go communicate your progress to the client, when you're all done with your mistake, be like, okay, this is settled. Here's what I did. Number six, if applicable, you could also give like a little written summary to the accountant. I've done that before. Either you could do it real time or you could take notes for the end of the year when they're going to do the taxes. Just be like, you know, a paragraph of like, this is the issue I ran into. This is what I did to fix it. This is why this journal entry is in QuickBooks, or this is why I deactivated this bank account because I no longer needed it or anything that might raise a question. It's good to just let them know proactively what's happening. And then number seven, think about the future and how you can learn from this mistake. So did you need to do a little bit more research before you started this aspect? Maybe you just started invoicing and you should have learned more about invoicing before you jumped in. So even though on my channel, I'm often trying to tell you to combat like that indecision, that paralysis of not knowing what to do, that's obviously a balance. But you might learn from this that you want to look before you leap a little bit more. And my next point is that sometimes the client is not always 100% right. So we've been talking about process errors, meaning like stuff that went wrong in QuickBooks. You could also make like people errors. So maybe you lost your temper with a client or maybe you were lacking communication or you made some mistake that had to do with like personalities. And I think for this, a lot of the same interpersonal skills apply. So own your mistakes. If it was your fault, you can briefly give an explanation if needed and say you're sorry for anything you did wrong. And the asterisk near that is that sometimes clients are jerks to you. And so if someone is a jerk and you don't want to work with them anymore, it's totally fine to fire that client. Like, that's the point of owning your own business. You get to choose who you work with. So if you're having like a personnel issue that is making you feel really bad and it's making you so that you're not enjoying your business, don't be afraid to let that person know, you know, we're not a good fit anymore and I will, you know, help pass off your stuff to a new bookkeeper.